to ask you a little bit about how you do what you do. First of all, what roughly is the rate of return for Carlisle annualized from its inception? It's about 30% gross internal rate of return. We've invested annually. That's correct. We've invested about uh, almost $60 billion of equity over the, uh, over the period of time, 23 years, and that's averaged a gross internal rate of return of about 30%. So that's a good rate of return. Now, yeah. whether we can do that in the future is, is harder yeah, yeah. to know right. because we're investing more money and it's more competitive, but that's what we've averaged to date. Well, it's astounding. Um, a few years ago, the CEO of one of your portfolio companies told me that he liked it because he didn't have to worry about pleasing Wall Street every quarter. At the same time, he said, we are on a sprint to succeed, and it's more intense than being in a public company ever has been. So what's the most important part about managing one of your portfolio companies? Well, private equity didn't have a very good reputation for managing its portfolio companies in the early years. It was thought that we just levered companies up and just wait, let a manager kind of uh, depend on the GDP growth to, to exit and make a good return. Now, private equity firms are spending enormous time bringing into these firms people like Lou Gerstner, who we brought in, or Jack Welsh, who's another firm. People have a lot of management skills. Increasingly, we're doing a lot more value-added operational um, skills to these companies. And as a result, I think we, we recognize that we have to make these companies more efficient, and we are. Right. Uh, I mean, these companies become very successful under your ownership. What changes? What, what's different after well, you own them? Well, let me explain. Uh, the concept behind private equity, and it's a very novel idea, is that you buy a company and then you make the manager an owner. Typically, many of these people were just division managers with modest salaries. Now, all of a sudden, they're owners. They think like owners. And all of a sudden, they think of ways to make efficiencies that they may have, maybe didn't think of before, didn't have an incentive to do so before. So that's one thing. And secondly, by operating in a private setting, not worrying about public quarterly returns, you can get people to think about a longer term type of uh, investment in a company and do things that you wouldn't do if you're a public company. But I think the most important thing that we think is, is what we add is a sense that uh, there are ways to make companies more efficient and, every, and get the management and the employees to focus together by making them all owners. And in fact, employees typically own a, a fair amount of the companies as well that we invest in. Right. Uh, another thing that you sometimes hear, and it seems to be true, is that private equity has an advantage in attracting great managerial talent because you can at least give these managers a chance to make a tremendous amount of money, more than they probably could in a publicly traded company. Uh, the great example, the famous example, is Dave Calhoun, who left General Electric to go to a Carlisle uh, portfolio company, Nielsen, with reportedly a chance to earn nine figures if it all succeeds. Uh, is that a big advantage? Well, yes. In that case, he was vice chairman uh, of uh, GE, right. but uh, his compensation would be relatively capped. In a private right. setting, we could give him a, enough of an incentive so that the wealth he could create be much more than he could have ever gotten at GE, no matter how high he might have risen at GE. And he also invested a lot of his own money, and he can make a profit on that as well. So, yes, uh, people can make more money in, in private equity if they perform. Right. If you don't perform, you can lose money.